I'm Dan Hughes. Uh, I'm a, uh, I was the webinar trainer for Nix Software from 2009 until 2014. Um, I am a, uh, a lecturer in the photographic sciences at the Rochester Institute of Technology. So I teach photography at the university level. And I, hi Brian from Webster, he's right down the street here. Um, and so I, I teach photography at RIT. Uh, that's my day job. I'm, I'm actually, as soon as I get off the webinar, I will be uh, grading some work that some of my students handed in a few days ago. Thank you very much for inviting me into your home today. Uh, and we're talking about the visit too. And control points and what you can do with control points. Uh, now, I typically use the control points that are within DxO Photo Lab. We'll, we'll look at that software in a couple minutes. Um, when you purchase the Nick collection, you actually get a copy of Photo Lab 2, uh, which has control points built into it. And mind you, we're focusing on control points today, uh, global controls, selective controls using control points in Viveza 2. And then we're also going to talk about some sort of photographic concepts in terms of moving your eye or your viewer's eye around the image. So uh, the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do, though, is just open right up into Viveza 2. The selective tool here is how you access the NIC collection uh, from Photoshop. I, I use Photoshop a lot when using the NIC collection uh, because of the fact that it has control uh, over layers, layer masks, blending modes, um, and other kinds of things like that. Um, long story short, the other way to find the NIC collection from Photoshop is to go to the filter drop-down menu, the NIC collection, and then click into Viveza 2. That's what we're going to do right now. It goes exactly the same as if I were to just use that uh, Viveza 2 button uh, there in the NIC collection um, selected tool in Photoshop. So here's our image. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is global adjustments here within Viveza 2, and then also selective adjustments, obviously, because it's probably the most important thing uh, within the NIC collection, let alone here within Viveza. So, uh, Inside of Viveza, the first time you open the collection or the software up, I believe it opens up something like this, where you've got on the right side of the interface your add control point button, your group, ungroup, global adjustments, and then brightness, contrast, saturation, and structure. Uh, we are going to actually just open up a whole subset or expand these sliders down, and now we have other color and contrast controls as well, shadows, shadow adjustment, warmth, red, green, blue, and hue. Uh, before we jump into this, we are going to be covering different parts of the interface today, but the main controls occur on the right side of the interface. Like the, the way that you actually adjust the image happens over here. The other tools in the top toolbar are ways of navigating the software. I'll show you those as well. So right now in the global adjustments, as we've expanded our, our extra tools down, uh, we're able to adjust brightness, contrast, saturation, structure, shadow adjustments, warmth, red, green, blue, and hue. Again, usually in my own workflow, I'm going to make as many of these global adjustments as possible using my raw processing software, using Lightroom or using um, Adobe Camera Raw or DxO Photo Lab. But sometimes I find myself sort of tweaking things in um, Viveza just here or there. Um, if you take any of these sliders to the left, it's going to remove that adjustment. So in this case, I shouldn't say it that way. It's going to um, bring that adjustment into the negative. So and therefore, with brightness, you're going to be darkening the image down. So if I slide that slider to the left, darkens the image down. Um, contrast, saturation, structure. Uh, if I drag my saturation slider to the right, it's going to be increasing my saturation globally throughout the entire photograph. This happens on the entire photo, no matter what, uh, with these global adjustments. Now, I, I mentioned this this way as well, because if I add a control point, notice where my cursor is. If I add a control point, this, where it says global, Right here, it will actually switch to say selective. And uh, what we're going to get out of that is any adjustments we make with our control points, you'll actually be able to slide these sliders around. Um, I'm going to just increase some structure overall. We've already increased some saturation. And uh, let's see what happens. If we click the add control point button, we'll be able to selectively 
adjust different parts of the image. Um, I enlarged my cursor, so my crosshair here looks gigantic right now. But if I go and drop my control point on part of the image, uh, notice a few things happened. First of all, the control point's been placed on the image, in this case on the elephant there in the foreground, uh, or closer to camera anyways. Each one of these control points has um, a slider that's sort of parallel to the point itself, right? And if I click on that control point and I drag it to the right, uh, it's going to be enlarging the selection that this control point is making. And if I drag it to the left, it's going to be making a smaller selection. Now, I know that because that circle that's surrounding the control point itself is the area that this point is going to influence. It's called literally the area of influence. And so if I encompass, let's say, just the back portion of our elephant, uh, from there, I'm able to control brightness, contrast, saturation, structure, shadow adjustments, warmth, red, green, blue, and hue. So all of these adjustments can be made selectively, uh, which means I can go ahead and you know brighten up the uh, back of our elephant, maybe add some contrast in, and then we'll talk about what structure is exactly. But uh, if I add some structure, you'll note I'm getting this really beautiful texture out of the elephant's skin on his back. And, and what we're then getting is we're directing the viewer's attention through the photo. We're starting to, anyways. And that is, um, you know, obviously the subject in this image are these two elephants, and we've got a bird, um, a couple, what, egrets, I guess. And um, this is what's going to sort of draw your attention in. But using control points and selectively adjusting light and color, we're going to be able to kind of direct your eye or the viewer's eye of the image to the portion of the photo that we, we want them to look at, to the more important parts of the photo. Before we can do that, we have to talk about how we can dodge and burn, how we can selectively adjust per particular portions of the photo. And it's these control points that really do it here within the Nick collection. So we've placed our point. If you follow me over to the right side of the interface here, and um, on, the, on the far right side, you have your control points list. Mine's open right now. Yours might be closed by default, but you literally just click on the words control point list on the right side. It opens it up for us, and then any control points that you've placed on your image will be listed out here. We only have one, so you only see the one show up right now. But on the far right side of your control points list is a little checkbox. And if you click on that little checkbox, that's going to show you the selection that that control point is making. Anything that's white is being um, affected by this control point. Anything that's black is not. And anything that's some shade of gray is being affected at a certain amount. Uh, the darker the gray, the less the control point is affecting. The lighter the gray, you know, the closer to white your um, your control point is is sort of um, illustrating to you. The the more the effect that control point is going to have. Uh, what you'll notice is it's making a selection inside of the circle, but it's not making a circular selection. And in fact, uh, what it's doing, the control point is actually looking for the object that you place the point on, and it's basing its selection on the edges of things that are inside of the area of influence, the colors and the tones. So red, green, blue channels, and uh, the luminosity and tonality, as well as these hard edges. The, the control point recognizes that there's, a, there's an edge from here to there. Now, the other thing that the control point wants to do is it wants to make a very photographic looking selection. And therefore, when you have a photographic looking selection, you have uh, a photographic looking adjustment, right? So if I place this control point on part of the highlighted area of the, the uh, elephant's ear, and I start to increase brightness, what it's going to do is it's going to select out that part of the ear, and then also some of the area around it, so that as we make that brightness adjustment, the effect overall looks photographic. It looks like the light could have actually have been doing that. And I, I want to just make that a point because with other selective tools, um, which are fantastic in lots of situations, like a lasso tool or a brush tool or select subject or uh, edge detected brushes, they're fantastic tools. They're great for compositing and cutting things out. But the beauty of these control points, especially within Viveza 2, is that you're able to control light and color as if the light and color was just like that in the photograph. And in fact, I'm going to click cancel for now. So we, we've sort of started to look at the control points. We took a look at what um, a global adjustment could do on the image. We'll probably, or maybe we'll come back to that image towards the end. Uh, I'm going to just jump right into Viveza 2. And here I've got this, this 
non-photographic image. It's just a photo of some shapes that I made in Photoshop to kind of just demonstrate or show you control points a little bit differently and a little bit more. And then also a technique that you can use for changing colors of objects, right? And in this case, uh, our control points, if I just go take a control point, place it on our, our red circle here, and then we go and look at our selection, you can get a better idea of what the control point's doing. Again, anything that's white, the control point is selecting. Uh, anything that's black, it's not. If I click on the control point and I start dragging it away, you can see sort of instantaneously the selection that the control point's actually making, right? And it's basing that selection on whatever we place the point on. Um, in this case, if I make my the area of influence really small, you can see that there's like a gradient. So it still recognizes the edge here, but there's this really wonderful gradient and it it, it can create these really interesting and beautiful effects. Um, and then you can also create more of like a cutout effect by just encompassing the entire object. Th this is how I tend to use the control points. I usually uh, encompass the entire object and then adjust it. Uh, in some situations, you're better off actually making a really sort of smaller selection of the object. Let's turn off the selection and then let's go ahead and just brighten this up and you can see what it's gonna do for us, hopefully. There we go. Add a little contrast. And then as I start to make this bigger, you can see the gradient that's created. And again, it, I'm just showing you this just to get a different feeling of how these control points are working. I'm not sure if it's even that helpful, um, but another cool technique that you've got is um, let's let's place this point on the red, right? Encompass the entire control or the entire object. And uh, let's say I wanted to change this color uh, from this red to this blue. Well, I could go into the sliders and start making these adjustments, however I felt necessary, um, or I could go over to the tools palette here. My control point has to be active, by the way, so the point has to be um, active that you must have control over those adjustment sliders. Um, but what you can do is either click on the eyedropper tool and literally just click on the color that's in the image that you want to emulate, and it'll go and make all of the adjustments to those sliders for you. Um, or the other way of using this tool is to actually click on this color swatch and then you can type in any RGB value or um, color value you might actually want. So it was originally red, let's actually make it um, magenta, right? So we'll click the okay button, that'll change that over. Um, and I think I need to make some little adjustments because my, there we go, guess wasn't perfect getting towards magenta. Okay, so it's just another way of using control points and um, it's, a, it's a way of sort of thinking about how these control points are working. Now, of course, with this the, the box here, the square was green and now it's going yellow and that's because of this last slider, by the way. So it's all of these adjustment sliders that you're seeing adjusted, but uh, I think the major color change in this case is occurring because of the hue slider which is an interesting tool. I don't find myself using it all that often here within Viveza, except when wanting to change the color like that. Okay, I'm gonna click that cancel button there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and jump over into Photo Lab. We've talked a little bit about how control points work. Um, now I wanna kinda talk to you about the, I guess the concept of directing the viewer's attention through the image. And this is where the kind of magic of control points really make this software come alive. Uh, first thing, this is the image that we're going to be processing, and uh, this is what we're going to do with it, right? So uh, I, I tried to make some, some of the adjustments are a little bit heavy handed, but I tried to make adjustments that sort of reminded me of what it felt like or what it looked like when I was there. Um, so here's the before image, this is what we're gonna be doing the processing with, and then here is the after image. And we're gonna basically decide where we're going to lighten and where we're gonna darken particular areas in the image to help to direct the viewer's attention through the photograph, purely using control points. So uh, we're here in Photolab, and the way that you access the Nick collection from Photolab is that you click the Nick collection button here in the lower sort of right quadrant of uh, Photolab 3. And when you click on it, 
you get your plugin selector that pops up. Um, and Viveza 2, being that it starts with a V and this list is in alphabetical order, it's going to be here at the bottom right, right before the settings checkbox or, or option. So we're going to click on Viveza 2. As that launches, I'm just going to take a sip from my water. Cool. And Viveza should launch. And one of the differences between launching in any of the NIC collection from Photolab compared to, uh, let's say, Photoshop, is that in Photoshop, you've got layers and layer masks. In um, a piece of software like Photolab 3 or Lightroom, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to have your original RAW file. It will be duplicated, at least by default, it will be duplicated as a TIFF file. And then the TIFF file goes into the NIC collection. So that's what we have here. Uh, we have a copy of the, uh, the Nikon RAW file, and it, so it's a .tiff file now. And um, this was the full frame of the image. If anybody noticed this, it says six megapixels. I've actually had the software, uh, I had Photolab 3 in my settings export my image as six megapixels. So um, I'll show you that setting. I'll show you exactly what I did just so you get an idea. But this is it's a Nikon D850 file, which should usually be like 45 megapixels. So it's a much larger file. It's just much faster for webinar purposes to use a six megapixel or so file um, for, for loading as well as just for um, streaming this stuff because we don't need the huge resolution. So long story short, control point button. We're gonna place a control point in the upper left shadow here. And I'm not gonna leave this control point here. I just wanna show you one of the things that you can do um, because there's a lot of texture and detail in those those shadow areas of this file. Uh, you're, you're able to uh, pull a lot of texture and detail out of this. So I'm not gonna leave my brightness up here because I like the corner being a little bit dark, but uh, the beauty of this is that it creates this very clean photographic looking selection. Right? That looks like it could be real, like the light could have actually been like that when it was actually more like that, you know? Um, now, I've made these adjustments to the control points, and this is sort of a technique that I like to play with once in a while. Um, yeah, I'll literally place a point and make some adjustments that I think are appropriate for that particular portion of the image, um, and then I'll literally click on it and just drag it around and see what it does. And I like to do that because it, it gives me... Um, some potential to think about. Like what if I you know, lighten this area and darken that area, or lighten this area and darken that area, and so on. And what, what that helps me to do is figure out exactly where I'm going to be dodging and burning, um, and then exactly how I'm going to approach my, my image. And in fact, if we sort of step back from this photo right now, uh, this, this was shot in Jaipur, India, um, and it's the city palace, or part, you know, of, a particular view of the city palace. And the the light was fine. I mean, it wasn't spectacular. I want to say it was like 10 a.m. or something like that. And it's when I was able to be there. Uh, and so I'm wandering around and I'm taking some photographs and uh, I like different aspects of this image. In fact, at the, as a large resolution, there's actually a silhouette of a person up here, which is kind of fun. Um, and then at the larger resolution, you get a lot of texture and detail in here. We're not seeing that because of the screen. But um, that's no excuse anyways. But what I want to do is direct your viewer, your eye as the viewer, uh, around the photo. So to, to do that, I have to be able to separate objects that uh, need separation. And I need to be able to kind of blend areas and tones together um, that, that that would work with, like an, a gradient, if you will. Um, so my area of interest is actually this entire photo. There's no one subject. I kind of want you to just move around the image. So I can't just go in and add some contrast into a particular area or darken down a particular area and expect that your eye is going to go towards the subject because there is no particular subject. But one of the things I am noticing is that there isn't a good separation from the blue sky to the yellow of the building. So what we'll do is just drop a control point in the blue sky here. And I know that I want the yellow of the building to be relatively bright. And if I want to add contrast between those two things, that means I'm going to have to darken down the blue sky. So I'll drop my control point, take my brightness level down, and then I'm going to add some contrast. And then I think I'm going to add some saturation to start with. Now, as I do that, 
this control point is affecting the yellow building a little bit. Right, so I've turned on my selection. You're seeing that it's got this beautiful gradient in the sky up here. It's doing a fantastic job to not affect any of the sort of top portions of this building. But it is affecting that building a little bit, and we don't want that. So I'm going to take another control point. I'm actually going to end up taking two or three control points, uh, but I'm going to place one in the shadow area of the building so that I can darken that down. And then I'm probably going to just take one more control point. In fact, let's duplicate this one. So uh, there's a, a couple ways to duplicate a control point in Viveza and in any of the NIC collection. Uh, the, the first way that I'm going to use here is to hold the Option key on a Mac or Alt if I'm on a PC. And while you're holding it, your cursor goes from a sort of standard uh, search cursor to a little plus point, right? And so if I'm holding Option, click on my control point, I can drag my duplicate away. And that's going to be an exact duplicate of that last control point, which is good. It's a good starting point for me. But what I'm going to do from there is uh, start to add a little bit of saturation and a little bit of structure. And um, how about even darken down the shadow adjustments just a little bit? Let's describe what these things are doing. So let's take a control point. I'm going to place it up here in the top of the image. We know what brightness does in contrast, probably, right? You take the brightness slider to the right, it brightens it up. Take it to the left, darkens it down, wherever the control point is affecting. Um, contrast is going to do the same thing. You slide it to the right, it's going to add contrast. So it's making the lighter areas lighter and the darker areas darker, um, for the most part, anyways. Saturation is kind of like the volume slider of color. So you're able to turn the volume up, turn the saturation of the color up. Um, by sliding that slider to the right, or desaturating, removing color, by sliding it to the left. Now, structure, I'm gonna brighten this up just a little bit more so it's easier to see. Structure, this next slider, is a texture adjustment. And in the top port part of this image here, you can get a good uh, idea of what that texture is doing. It, it basically recognizes the little textures that are painted into uh, the top part of this uh, image here. And, uh, it increases it, it brings it out. And what it wants to do is basically separate those tones from these tones. It recognizes that nicely. And um, if I maybe slide this around, you can see the little details and textures sort of coming out because of that. Um, that's your structure adjustment. If you were to slide the structure adjustment to the left, it removes that texture. It smooths those tones out, which can also be really, really effective. And in fact, might even be kind of cool here add a little saturation. I don't think we actually, I don't think it works that nicely uh, into the negative here uh, in that case. But long story short, that's your saturation and structure. Shadow adjustments, um, th what this wants to do is basically it's a, it looks for the darker values that the control point is affecting and it attempts to only adjust those particular values. So you can darken them down by sliding shadow adjustments to the left. You can lighten them up by sliding shadow adjustments to the right. Uh, warmth, red, green, blue, and hue. Now, these three sliders, red, green, blue, are unbelievably powerful as to what they can do. It basically will allow you to, um, and hue as well, but it basically red, green, and blue will allow you to adjust those colors in those color channels um, selectively with these control points. So uh, what, what that means, and this is probably too close or too red of a value. Let's say we drop it into the uh, kind of gray clay area back here, or not so saturated clay area back here. Um, and if we were to take the red slider and I start to increase red, right? So you can see it start to turn red. If I take it way too far, um, you know, obviously this is, is way too much. It starts to glow like a highlighter or something. But we're able to take that red slider and increase red. Or if we needed to or wanted to, we could decrease red, right? And what that does is it actually adds cyan, right? So um, your red, green, and blue sliders are working with their complementary colors or working against their complementary colors, probably. Better way to word it. Uh, so red is going to work with cyan or against cyan by decrease red, it's adding cyan. If I go into my green slider, if I remove green, it's gonna be adding magenta, right? And then if I go into my blue slider, I can add blue, and that whole area starts to turn purple because of those other adjustments that we've made. Or if I remove blue, 
what it's doing is it's adding yellow, right? And so now I'm able to control all of those bits of color individually to the exact extent or rate that I, that I want, that I'm interested in. So I like what's happening there. I'm not actually, I never told you why I was doing that thing, but um, I guess I'm showing you what those color sliders are going to do. I've duplicated these control points so that they are duplicate exactly the same. And now they're all going to be controlling these or this portion of the image. I am going to drop another control point though and try and place it right there on the neutral color. And, and hopefully this is helpful. Um, as I drop the control point on this neutral frame here, you can see it neutralize. So these control points are no longer affecting that area. And I, I know that for two reasons. First of all, if I slide it around, I can just see it happen. Um, and then secondly, watch the little color swatch that's over here on the right-hand side. As I move the control point around and I find the exact tone or color uh, that I want to leave it on, A, I can see it kind of like snap to in the adjustment on the image, but then I can also see uh, the exact color that we've placed the point on. You know, again, if I go and drop a control point up here in the yellow, you'll see that swatch turn yellow or blue. So I want to just make sure and drop the point on the right area. That's got that nice clean tone. And then what I'm going to do is darken down. Actually, I'm going to leave this part brighter. And then I'm going to darken down from the um, outside of the image, in this case, towards the center a little bit. And what this should help to do is now I'm, I'm separating these subjects and these objects off of each other. So um, we're, we're using a technique that, at RIT anyways, I call checkerboarding. Uh, but this is where you are lightening light areas in an image, darkening darker areas in an image, and therefore separating those, those portions of the image off of each other. Right, so we've darkened the blue sky. We've kind of lightened up the yellow of the building. I've darkened down this area. Um, what I'm going to do is drop a control point over here in our um, sort of highlight area of the the city palace. Add some saturation, a little bit of structure. Let's go ahead and brighten that way up. There we go. And so now what we're doing is we're basically telling the viewer what's important by um, adjusting the brightness levels of these images or of, of this particular photo. And then also, if I want to draw your attention towards uh, the, the foreground a little bit, I can add some contrast in here. Actually, let's just drop the control point right here in the shadow and darken that down a boatload. So like 30% or something. And now we've got this nice contrast between um, the shadow area and the highlight area here. And all we've done is just darken down the shadow. In this case, let's actually brighten up this part of the image, add some contrast, a little saturation. And so now your eye is gonna be attracted into that brighter, more saturated portion of the photograph. In fact, the, if I haven't mentioned this already, oops, um, the, the human eye is going to be attracted to the brightest part the most contrasty part in the most saturated portion of the image. And therefore, if I want your eye as the viewer to be directed towards a particular part of the image, um, I'm going to increase those, like the contrast levels of those, that concept itself. So, so if I want you to look at something, I'm gonna make it more saturated and brighter, or I'm going to go to an object that's right next to the thing I want you to look at, and I'm gonna darken it down, and I'm gonna remove saturation or remove contrast. And that's gonna to help to direct your attention towards uh, the brighter portion of the image. So um, yeah, I think we can call this one done for now. Let's let's take a look at the before and after. So we haven't done this at all so far. I, I know that there are some folks in here who are very familiar with the Nick plugins and then some other folks who probably never even opened them up before. So I wanna make sure that it's equal for all. Um, and I, I'll just show you these views in the upper left corner. So right now we're on what's called the single image view. And if I turn this little checkbox off, you see the before. And if I click it back on, you see the after, the enhanced image. And you can see we're basically relighting the photograph. And, and I will admit, I'm sure there's a few people who have commented on this already. I will, I will admit, I've, I've probably over adjusted parts of this photograph. Um, but with the concept of trying to help to direct the viewer's attention, you know, I'm not, I, there's actually other things that I think I would do to this photograph, uh, like separate uh, this part out a little bit 
from this part, right? Because now we've got this beautiful line hitting here. Um, and then all of this other thing, or all of these other things. I think I would probably be a little less heavy handed though. Um, and in fact, to see that, if I want to see a direct side by side, I move back into the upper left corner. And um, I can almost guarantee that your eye is going to be attracted to the bottom version, right? In fact, let's click on this little twirler so we see a side by side. On the left, you see the original. On the right, you see the enhanced. But if you kind of like lean back in your chair, just a little, try it with me. Lean back in your chair and and just you, you know kind of look in between the two. Your eye is going to to kind of go towards that right image for a bunch of reasons. First of all, overall, there's way more contrast. There's a lot more saturation. But there's also all of these little different uh, tones. It's a nuance of these adjustments that we're doing here uh, that really help to adjust, or, or sorry, attract and direct your eye uh, through the photograph. Again, as I click the Save button in the lower right-hand corner, I think my adjustments are a little um, heavy-handed. So I click the Save button in the lower right corner of um, of color effects, or sorry, of Viveza 2 rather. Uh, and so what we got out of that was our enhanced image. We've got our our uh, our original raw file, uh, and then we've got our adjusted file here as well. Cool. All right, so let's take a look at one more photograph. I think we've got plenty of time for that. Um, I actually have a couple more images that we could talk about, but for the sake of time, I want to make sure that we um, I want to direct your eye a little bit around this image and kind of talk about a portrait a little bit, as well as uh, I just have a very different kind of photograph than uh, the previous image. Uh, so first thing, we're using Viveza 2 with these control points, but just in case you're not familiar with this, we're, we're inside Photo Lab 3, the local adjustment button here, uh, basically this has control points as well. Not basically, it completely does. And the control points inside of Photolab have brightness adjustments or like contrast adjustments, color adjustments, and then also some sort of sharpness adjustments. You can sharpen or you could blur if you wanted to. Uh, the, the beauty of using the control points here in Photolab is that this is parametric image editing. It's, it's a non-destructive process. You could always go back to your control point. You could always go back to your original raw file. And that's one of the major benefits of using these control points from Photolab. And I find myself personally using the control points from Photolab a lot more than using Viveza 2 just because I, ha I have this parametric image editing and I have actually some other really cool adjustments. But that's not what we're here to talk about. I just wanted to mention that. So what we're here to talk about is maybe adjusting the image a little bit for um, optimization within Viveza 2. I've already gone in and adjusted my, my exposure a little. At the original value, at, at the original uh, exposure, I exposed a little bit to the right, which made the sky go bright, but held lots of good detail um, in the shadows. I think for editing in Viveza 2, I'm going to take it down a third of a stop or thereabouts, uh, and then I'm going to leave probably my smart lighting off, but there's a really cool option in here. It's called DxO Smart Lighting, and uh, it, it's actually doing some of the things that I would want to do within the VESA. Uh, the beauty of it is that it's parametric. It's, it's editing it with the raw data, and then also it's, a, it's not me adjusting it. It's an automatic adjustment, which makes for a uniform and consistent kind of effect. I'm going to turn that off for now. So we get a little bit more of an effect while we're in Viveza. And we're going to click on to the Nick collection. We're going to click into Viveza 2. I want to direct your attention towards the bride and the groom, probably mostly the bride. I think this is sort of like the bride hero shot, or one of them anyways. Uh, and I, I don't necessarily need to make any global adjustments because we already made most of the global adjustments. Uh, and the, the only reason I might do this stuff slide around my saturation or structure is just to help me to get an idea of what maybe some extra color would do in some areas of the image or what extra structure might do to per particular parts of the image. And then also what would happen if I, um, you know, if I left these uh, things here is I would be affecting her skin, uh, the dress, his skin, the whole image. So I wanna be careful of that if I do decide that I'm gonna leave saturation or structure or any of these adjustments up. They're all global until um, you make them selective, until you use control points. Let's do that. 
So if we want to direct the viewer's attention towards our bride, we're going to brighten up the bride and add contrast to the bride. So I'm going to add a control point. We've got a really nice bit of light here on the, uh, on the dress, so I know I'll be able to increase the contrast a little bit and maybe even brighten those values up. And um, I had a question about grouping and ungrouping. So let me see if I can answer that here. Let's say we want all three of these control points to have equal values, equal adjustments done, doing like adjusted to the sliders. Uh, or let's do four, actually. We can group these points together so that if we make adjustments to one of the sliders, it adjusts all of those control points in the group. So what we need to do to group them together is select them all. So if I just click on one and then I click on another, note it deselects the previous, right? So if I click on this one, no longer is this bottom selected or, or vice versa. If I click on that one, that top one isn't um, selected anymore. So uh, you select multiple control points in any of the Nick suite the same way. And it's the same thing as if you wanted to select multiple files on a desktop or something like that. You can either hold the shift key down on your keyboard and click on the individual control points and then click the group button that you'll find in the upper right corner of the interface. Uh, or you can actually just click anywhere that's not on that control point and drag. So click and drag, and that's going to highlight those control points as I encompass them in that bounding box. Uh, and then I click the group button and it groups them together. So now if I go into the saturation slider, into the warmth slider, maybe add a little warmth to her, just a little bit into those highlights, it's kind of nice, um, and a little more structure. Um, what you'll note, I've add, added too much warmth, is that it's actually adjusting all of these points. If I didn't want them to be uh, grouped anymore, all I'd have to do is click on one of them, click ungroup. The sliders are gonna stay exactly where you left them in the group, but then you can go back in and um, hone in a particular control point, right? So I can go and maybe remove the, the added warmth um, up here. So uh, hopefully that answers the group question, the grouping question. Uh, again, to direct the viewer's attention towards our subject, I'm gonna brighten Kim up just a bit, add some saturation. I'm gonna add a little warmth to her skin as well, just a touch. Let's go ahead and brighten just a little bit. And then I'll duplicate that control point by holding Option, clicking and dragging, and I'll place another control point up here on her face. Now, I think that this control is too strong, so I'm going to direct that or bring that down just a little bit. Maybe remove a little bit of the saturation. But now she's got this nice kind of warm glow around her because of that, that warmth that we've added into the dress as well. Now, with Justin, he's now a little bit too dark, so let's drop a control point. I don't want to brighten him up too much, and I don't necessarily want to even brighten him. I might go into the shadow adjustments and just bring that shadow adjustment up a little bit just to get the texture out of his uh, tux. And I'll actually leave his pants dark uh, because I don't necessarily need you to be looking down at his feet, right? In fact, uh, he should have shoes on for sure. But uh, we were on an island. This was the day after their wedding and uh, I got them to dress back up in their wedding attire. And uh, I put them in the little 14 foot boat up in Plattsburgh, New York, and brought them out to an island. It's called Valcor Island. Uh, and this is just this little rock outcropping off the edge of the island. Uh, and I got him to do another or a shoot. These, I had some really beautiful strobes uh, to light them with. And we got them going right after sunset. So I missed this light, unfortunately. But that's what happens in some shoots, I guess. So what I'm doing here is I'm dropping some control points in the background. And um, let's let's go back over to the control points list because we talked about this at the very beginning of the webinar, um, but that was when we only had one control point listed out in the list. And so there there are nine points on the um, on this particular image right now. And just to kind of cover these things a little bit, uh, on the left side, on the left side of each of these control points, there's a little checkbox. And that little checkbox is basically going to turn that control point on and off. In fact, let's let's darken the sky down a little bit more. We're not going to leave it there, but uh, that little checkbox, if you turn it off, 
it's, it's off. We're not affecting that control point anymore, or you're not seeing the effect of that control point anymore. There's a little color swatch, which indicates to you uh, the color that that control point's been dropped on. The name of the control point is just listed out um, by number of which one it is in the control points list, and that is in order that you've placed on the image. Uh, you cannot rename those. That is an option, or that, no, sorry, it's not an option. It is a, a request that people have been making for years and years and years, and you cannot rename uh, those control points. I don't know why that um, that's never been a feature because so many people have asked for it, but uh, it's not, unfortunately. So the little percentage here, the little number that you see to the right of the control point listing uh, is how big the control point is. That is how much coverage that control point has over the entire image. It's not the percentage that the photo is affecting or the control point is affecting rather, it's it's the size of the area of influence. So if I bring this out to 100, it is encompassing 100% of the image. It's not necessarily affecting 100% of the image. So it's just, it's good to sort of note that. Um, and then that far right checkbox, if you click that on, that's gonna show you what that particular control point is doing. You can have multiple control points clicked on, right? So now we've got control point nine and control point seven. Number seven was the one that's affecting Justin's uh, tuxedo. Uh, you can actually click on the little square that has a circle in it, little mask button, if you click on that, it actually shows you the selection of all of the control points at one time. I don't find this to be helpful in Viveza 2. This same option is within Color Effects, and it's very, very helpful within Color Effects Pro uh, because it shows you what, what's being added um, by that particular filter and what's not. So it's a nice little option there. Anyways, I want to darken down the sky a little bit, but I don't want to darken it this much. Um, I just want to, I want to use this current value, this current brightness value, as an indicator for me. So if I click on this control point, because it's making such a dramatic adjustment, by moving it around, I can get a, a good idea as to what will happen if I leave the control point there, but also just a good idea as to the potential of what we could be doing with these values. So I'm not gonna leave that brightness that low, but sometimes it is nice to leave, um, or to, it to sorry, it's nice to keep those kinds of adjustments that are really dramatic in situations where you're not exactly sure what's gonna happen. And if you leave it on there, it's easier to see what's what's going on. Um, so I'm warming up the background a little bit because it was right around sunset. I do want to add some contrast. And then what we're going to do is add another control point to the sky back here. And we'll cool this part of the sky down. Let's make the area of influence bigger. And now we'll have this really kind of beautiful pastel-like uh, evening. And it was like that. It just wasn't like that at this point. It was It was starting to get there. So I'm gonna cool down that blue sky. And then I just need to duplicate this control point. All right, so now we've got this beautiful pastel-like image. Uh, one more look at the before and after. This time we'll use a split preview. So if I click on the split preview, uh, this cuts the image right down the middle. On the left is the original, on the right is the enhanced. And if you click on that little line, you can drag them back and forth. So the before and the after. And again, a lot of my adjustments here have been heavy handed, I will admit that, but it just goes to show um, you know, how these tools are working a little bit more. <laughs>